put it in. Thank you. So that's three, two, yes. one. Okay. Perfect. We'll see. Bonjour à tous, je vous invite à vous asseoir pour ceux qui restent le temps de la conférence, s'il vous plaît. On accueille à nouveau pour la deuxième journée la Namibie. Donc nous avons aujourd'hui euh, Feyan Konradi, si je le prononce bien, j'espère. Ensuite nous avons Matt Bradford et Richard Hardwick. On va commencer la conférence, je vous demande à nouveau de bien lever la main et de demander uh, le micro pour poser votre question uh, raise your hand pour euh, ask for the microphone encore une fois. Uh, please wait for the microphone to be in your hands before uh, beginning to speak so we can et, get this uh, simultaneous interpretation as well I'd like you to introduce uh, yourself first and, and mention the media you're from thank you um Question for you, Matt, please. Are you um, looking back a, a year or two? Would you be pretty surprised to be sat here now? Um, pretty surprised. Uh, rugby is a strange world, eh? Um, I think the thing I'm pleased about is to be contributing to to a team uh, that's growing, to be involved in an environment of players that are, are working incredibly hard. Um, so that's what I'm pleased about. Surprised? Uh, anything happens in international sports, so. No, I'm not surprised, but uh, just really pleased to be part of this group of players and see the way they work. And what has, coming into camp at, at this stage, what has surprised you, I suppose, about the team and what have you been able to bring to them? So I think work ethic is really surprising for me, you know, how, how hard they've worked. Um, and, and I must say a big thank you to, to World Rugby and the, the support that they've, that they've given the performing nations. Um, it's, it's incredible to see when they have that structure, um, how the players develop. So I suppose what's given me, what I've brought is just uh, an eye of, of the gap between probably where the, uh, performance nations are in the top tier nations and just help the players to create a, a mechanism for themselves to close that gap. You know, um, I think the more we can expose players that aren't playing probably tier one nations to that type of environment, uh, the better the game is going to be at international rugby. And I suppose if you look at the, the top of the table, how close games are, anybody can beat anybody. I think if you looked at from 20 to 15, it's probably the similar, you know, so we want to try and elevate that. And it's just been incredible with, you know, the real backing world rugby has given to, to create a high performance environment to see how the players have grown. Having worked with so many sort of big, big nations on the big stage, is there a sense of sort of getting back to the basics of rugby and what maybe brought you in it as a kid and, and the real enjoyment level? I just enjoy, enjoy the game, you know, for me. And, and, I, and I don't think there's a difference between you know, a nation that's sitting one to five on the table or, or sitting five to 20 on the table. If you go to it, the players love to play. And it's our responsibility as, as management, uh, as, as, as leaders of the game, the custodians of the game, is to create the best environments for the players to play. Um, and, and that's just been so rewarding for me, is to see the enthusiasm, the work rate, the energy of the players. Good morning, Moreno Mola from Sky Sport Italy. Matt, you faced uh, uh, Italy a couple of times in the past with different teams. How are you rating maybe the mm, becoming better of the Italian team throughout the years? And where do you think maybe this Namibia side can not put threats, but will want to play against such a different team mm. from Italy, especially thinking of the past? Mm. It's a very different Italian team. Um, I think uh, in, the, in the Six Nations, they, they've really shown in the past Six Nations the ability to, to how, they, how they've played in the past, uh, the past Six Nations, the ability to play, how the, the top tier Fr France, Ireland have struggled against them, you know, really, really struggled against them as Six Nations. So I think Kieran has really, um, what he's done at Benetton, brought it through to the Italian side, has really created a, 
an unbelievable environment in the Italian rugby. The, the junior structures uh, are, are, are phenomenal. Uh, what they've been doing at the Junior World Cups. So their whole their whole system is is is, is now really really prime for this occasion. So it's a very if you think maybe ten years ago when I or more than longer when I was playing it was probably a set piece orientated Italy. They they're probably more of a, a continuity based team and great passing, great running. So I think that's going to be the threat for us. Is is how do we uh, how do we how do we confront that? Um, particularly, I think performance nations play pretty much more a set piece oriented game. Um, but I think for us, it's, it's about being brave. It's about having belief in what we've done. Uh, if you look at our journey, we've had to go away on the road uh, and and win away on the road to qualify. Uh, going to South America in our in our in our build up. We were really competitive in two games and then got across the line in the third. So that belief in the side is there. Um, and and I think when you have a team that's got a lot of belief, I think that's the threat. Uh, we won't go away. We are, we are brave. Uh, we have a lot of belief in our players, and our players will we'll put it all out there. When you confront an opposition like that, you've got to be good. So we're looking forward to it. Uh, two questions for uh, Richard Harwick. The first one, is uh, with all due respect, the fact from playing in Super Rugby and before with Wallabies and now with Namibia, how are you dealing with this situation? Look, <coughs> it's, a, it's, a good, it's a good point. Um, but I think these guys here, um, as Matt has touched on, he, they, everyone loves to learn, everyone loves to uh, get better in, in, in their way. So look, for me, I am just trying to learn from the coaching staff. We have an unbelievable coaching staff. I'm trying to get better personally, and then the learnings that I've learned over the uh, my career in Super Rugby and um, all the games that I've played is trying to just bring it back and help people grow and get better. And uh, as Matt said, we've done an unbelievable job of um, where we started uh, two months ago, and we've built our way up to where we are now. Um, there's a lot of belief in the team, so a lot of that comes down to little details that I can give, but the fundamental. Um, work rate and fight in the team was already there. Um, so, look, I just try and do my my bit, but fundamentally, I just need to do my job um, and just keep getting better as 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 a person and as a player. Um, and then that will translate to other players wanting to get better and learning, and and that's how we move forward as a team. And second question, and finally for me, you know very well an Italian player. Ioane playing together with uh, with the Rebels, which is your relationship with Win uh, between you and him? How have you seen him? Maybe different when he arrived last uh, March, I think. And uh, what do you think about Monty Ioane? No, we, we've got actually got a very good relationship, uh, Monty, um, in Super Rugby. I kept prodding him about um, not scoring any tries. Um, and uh, unfortunately, he didn't catch up to me in Super Rugby. But uh, he's uh, no, he's a really he's an athlete. Uh, he's a very he understands the game a lot. Uh, he likes getting involved in the game. Uh, he likes attacking. So I mean, that's going to be a threat for us um, going into that game. Uh, but look, when uh, off the field, we're going to be friends. But that 80 minutes that we're going to be playing, we'll be going after each other. One for you, uh, Vian. Sorry for my pronunciation. Um, yesterday, Alistair, your coach, head coach, talked a lot about the sacrifices players have been through in their career just to get to this stage. Can you give us any examples, perhaps, of things that you've had to do to get where you are or, or perhaps some from your teammates? Yeah, look, so <clears throat> Namibia is a small rugby nation. We're a proud rugby nation. Um, Looking back at my personal journey, <clears throat> there's the club rugby is big in Namibia, um, but you really had to like go through university levels to actually get seen or be in a environment to get picked up through clubs. So for me personally, I had to study first and then look for rugby second. Um, ultimately, that led to me being included in the first rugby World Cup and only be able to kick on, kick on from there. Went to Doncaster Knights in the, in the UK, um, enjoyed my time, and um, yeah, basically from there on, just kicked on. I've been able to play in the American League, absolutely loved every minute of it. Um, but being around 
being around the Namibians, being around people that you've grown up with, it's always special coming back and being able to contribute um, in certain aspects of the game. So that's always nice. Great. Do you see in America a big potential for growth in rugby? What, what's it been like over there? <clears throat> Look, it is, um, it is a growing league. There's um, good quality of players playing in, in the league, which is always helpful in terms of growing the rugby in America. Over my last couple of seasons, I've seen the sport growing before my eyes. Um, there's a lot of support coming in, which is always nice to see. So potentially, maybe over a couple of years, they've got a couple of years going into the next, well, I think the World Cup's in 2031 for them. So there's still enough time for it to be one of the, one of the top leagues in the world. So it's always good. It's, it's a learning curve for everyone. And I think for the league itself, it's just getting better. Uh, Matt, uh, can you give us a few words about how do the Namibian rugby structure evolve the last years? So, as, as Vienna said, they've got a quite a vibrant club league, um, but not a, not a lot of. It's more of a semi-professional uh, structure, the club league. Um, really, community rugby, um, uh, and the, the, it's good for their school systems to be able to filter into their, into their club sides. The clubs are very, very well entrenched in their communities. So really similar to what you probably find in Argentina uh, or, or, or Uruguay with a good, good, good club structure. Um, but from that, there's, there's a gulf to, to the professional leagues and uh, Namibia is going to be looking to, to formulate a, a professional franchise system in, in their country because their professional side plays in South Africa uh, in, in one, of their South one of the South African domestic competitions. So that's where the, the, the professional players, players play. Uh, otherwise, we need to rely on, on a lot of players who, who like Vian and Richard, who, who apply their trade in the professional leagues uh, all over the world. Um, but the challenge for Namibia will be to fill that gap between the, the semi-professional club structure and, and the professional team that plays in South Africa. Uh, and that's what they're going to be looking to do probably going forward uh, in, the next, in the next cycle, is to create a, uh, a professional uh, domestic um, competition uh, to be able to take, their rugby, to take their rugby on. So the more we expose players to, 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 to formal SC, to formal high performance, uh, what our organisation requires is, is that collectively a, a, bigger, a bigger pool of players are they close to that? So that's going to be the challenges going forward, um, and that's why this World Cup is so important to us: is to is to put, is to show the potential of the players, because that's what's impressed me is, is the potential of the players, um, and and it's 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 our responsibility as management, as coaches, is to create that as a, in, in a bigger stage uh, in Namibia. Question to Matt and to Vian, and don't get me wrong, please. As Namibian, because you are coaching and playing for Namibia, which is the relationship you have with the South African rugby? But not just from the rugby point of view, because you pointed out quite clearly now, but also from the emotional point of view. Big brother, small brother, uh, we don't like them because they are big boys, and basically, in your head, which is the relationship, and how do you see the Springboks or the South African rugby for Namibia as well? I think there's been a, a, a such a long history between between the two nations. Uh, good history. Uh, there's no there's no animosity. Um, we 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 benefit from being the close proximity to a very well structured professional environment of rugby. So we benefit from that. Um, a lot of the players, myself and Vian, were probably at South African University. That's where we we, we 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 did our playing days. So we benefit from it. Uh, I suppose it's the same as what Uruguay, Chile uh, benefit from Argentina. It's it's a, it's it's a really productive environment to be to be in. Um, for them personally, I think they're uh, a very very serious contender. Uh, you know, must be one of the top top teams going into this competition. Uh, they they're peaking at the right time. They're playing well. They've got most of their players, probably ninety percent of their players, fit. So, uh, good luck. Uh, question to Wayne. Uh, what have you learned from the last World Cup 
And what do you can you add to this World Cup now in, in France since in, in four years? Yeah, so <clears throat> came and played in 2019. Uh, well, Japan was good good experience for us as a team. We were in a in a good position as well with good players, but ultimately we end up losing players after the World Cup, and there's new players coming in. Um, so basically, just adding more experience to the squad. Um, we've been able to work together s since after the World Cup, um, preparing for our qualifications, getting new players and getting new coaching staff and players that players and coaches that contribute towards our goal at the Rugby World Cup. So ultimately, we just focused on at, at this World Cup, making sure that we achieve our goals as a collective. Um, and you know, making our nation proud, um, that's probably the most important part is we got a, a lot of people and home support backing us, people looking all across the world at players playing for the Namibian side. So ultimately, we just want to make them proud and making sure that we, as a collective, just achieve our goal and achieve what we set out for ourselves. Thank you very much. Good luck for tonight. Thank you, Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, everyone.